Hey everyone, Graham from Boosted Performance here. I guess welcome to episode one of a little YouTube vlog series we're going to do for the GR Corolla. I've been kind of wanting to do these for a while. Um, just in general, you know, people ask us all the time, you guys should, you know, make some content, do some videos, talk about your tuning, how you're building your cars, where you're racing, what you're doing. So I guess we're going to, we're going to take the opportunity with the GR Corolla to do that since it's brand new and we're doing, you know, all kinds of different things to get it ready to race. We're doing custom tuning with it. So, you know, we, we did the even Turi video in the dyno and kind of showed you guys that intake and got a lot of positive feedback. So I guess we kind of just want to do some vlog style videos where I just sort of talk about what we're up to, you know, updates on tuning, updates on products we're testing and racing and all that. So here we go. Hope you guys like it. We'll do some more if you do. A lot of these I'm going to shoot just while I'm dri driving to the shop from my house. Uh, it's a good time to make some videos like that. Well, yesterday we put the MBRP uh, carbon fiber center exit exhaust on the car. The whole goal in looking for a cat back for this car was lightweight, center exit. Wanted it to sound good and rowdy. It's a fun little car. We're going to be on the track with it a lot. Didn't want it to be over the top. There seemed like a good option. We we're also looking for something that was pretty budget friendly. Again, for the kind of building in the essence of making this car into a track rat, which is what we're doing. So we went with that exhaust and put it on. And honestly, it sounds great. I don't really think it captures very well and you can hear it and really appreciate it unless you're in person. But we'll try to get some audio clips of it um, using the camera, try to get some decent sound so you guys can kind of hear it. So again, don't know how it's gonna capture in the video, but in the car, it's pretty deep and throaty. You know, I, I'm going to be honest, it's a, it's a small displacement, it's a three-cylinder, it's not going to sound like a V8 or an inline six or anything like that, so, you know, come correct with your expectations on how this car is going to sound, but to me, it, if you've ever been around in a side-by-side, -side, um, especially like the Yamaha three-cylinder, the Can-Am three-cylinder, um, any of those, this reminds me of that. They have a pretty deep growl and a you know kind of a good tone and as you wind them out they they sound really interesting and i i love the way this car sounds now wrapping it out with the exhaust on it and we'll you know we'll do some of that here later in the drive so you can hear the cold start just stopped it's you know a little loud during the cold start but sitting here at idle very reasonable in the cabin um not gonna upset any of your neighbors in my opinion even during the cold start so anyway just some quick thoughts on that so let's go ahead and start driving here I'm gonna turn the AC on, but try to keep it low so it doesn't make a bunch of noise. But we're in Iowa and it's supposed to be 98 degrees today for the peak. It's very hot, very humid. But that's not actually a bad time of the year to, you know, develop tuning and test things out with a car like this because those are kind of worst case scenario conditions. So leaving the neighborhood here, try to keep my neighbors happy. I'm shifting under 2000, easy on the throttle. It's not loud, there's no drone. So that's nice. Kind of let the RPMs go up a little bit. You can certainly start to hear it now. But then shift into fourth, I'm about 2,500 RPMs, just cruising along 35 miles an hour. It's very, very reasonable sounding. And same thing when I was on the highway yesterday, it's not loud at all. Uh, it doesn't really drone. You know, when you when you get your foot into it, you hear it, but that's that's pretty much what you want with something like this. So very happy with that. As far as what we're doing with the car, so you know, primary focus of us having this car at Boost Performance, of course, is to do tuning. That is the primary thing that we do day in and day out. We do some consulting. We sell some parts. Um, we've been doing that for a long time with Subarus. Um, also, BRZ FRS is a big platform for us. So when we saw the GR Corolla, it definitely piqued our interest because. It's kind of like a mashup of, you know, an 86 car, an FT86 or a GR86 and a Subaru. You know, you've got the nimble handling of a lighter hot hatch, you know, but you've also got, you know, a Toyota three cylinder turbo engine now, which is very interesting. A very trick all wheel drive system that um, works extremely well. You know, the way they the way they set it up to overdrive the rear and use track mode is, is very impressive. When you take this thing around a corner and get it just right and throttle on at the right moment it snaps around in a good way you know gives you some gives you some you know helpful oversteer to point through the corner and just sticks and goes so it's a very intelligent system it works very well so we're very into the in, 
into the car in general, but we picked it up, you know, so we can develop and offer tuning for it. At the moment, we're using Ecutech to do the tuning. We've been working with Ecutech for over a decade now. Um, FRS, BRZ stuff is a, is a you know popular one. We've got some other platforms that we do, but they, they came out with the software, the beta software for the GR Corolla, so we jumped on that right away to start working on it, and it's pretty darn good. You know, they've got the important stuff to find. They're, they're working very quickly to, you know, get more things figured out and defined, and they'll work on custom code so we can do things like flex fuel, launch control, flat foot shift, all those fun things. So good, good software company. So that's what we're using right now. And um, we've been experimenting with 91 octane. So we kind of got some worst case scenario fuel, experimenting with 93 octane, a little bit better fuel, and then also doing ethanol blends. So right now I've, I've pushed this car up to about an E50 blend. And so far the stock fueling system is showing no signs of, you know, not being able to keep up, but I am getting a little bit limited on how much you know, spray capacity or injector capacity I have since the port injectors on this car are very small. It's mostly leaning on the DI system. Once we drop in some bigger port injectors and we can scale for those, full E85 in this car is going to be super easy and super potent. So we'll definitely share that stuff when we get to it. But for now, we're just doing some kind of some ethanol blending to pick up some power there. I would say, genuinely. Just cruising along, it's got a good tone to it. Turn on my uh, auto blip downshifts. One feature I love about this car is the auto blip downshift is super helpful. You know, people argue, oh, I can heel toe, I'm really good at it, driver scale, this and that. I mean, you're not wrong. There's people that are good at it, I'm pretty good at it. But you're never gonna be as good as a computer. And you're already leaning on the computer for drive-by-wire, you're leaning on it for a lot of things, no reason not to lean on it for your downshifts. And what's really interesting about this car that I've never never seen on a, on a Toyota or, you know, any other car that's, you know, Japanese, um, is the clutch switch isn't just actually a switch, it's a full position. So the ECU knows exactly how far you're pushing the clutch, so it knows when to time the blips, which is why they're so smooth and crisp on this car. It also knows which gear you're going for. So if you go from four down to two for a slow corner, it will blip enough for second gear. Or if you click into third, but don't, you know, but don't let out and then grab second, it'll blip twice and you'll be exactly where you want it to be, which is very cool. So very intelligent system there. In terms of auto blip, again, you know, the purist may not like it, may not want to use it. That's cool. It's you can turn it off. But for me, when I'm driving this car on the track or any track, um, I'm always trying to tune in auto blip on an aftermarket ECU or if it can be patched in like on the GR86 cars with Ecutech. I always leverage that. And the reason being, again, I'm pretty good, but I'm never gonna be as consistent and perfect on every single corner as a computer. Um, the other benefit too is when you're trying to heel toe and you're trying to threshold brake, that's a very delicate balance because you're trying to manipulate the brake pressure just perfectly coming into a corner, not too much, not too little, and you're trying to use your same foot to get over and whip the gas pedal. Again, that's difficult. So if you can focus completely on the brake pedal, just put your foot square on it and focus all of your mental effort on breaking into the corner just right and rolling off the brakes and carrying, you know, carrying through the corner perfectly and let the, let the computer deal with the blipping for you, you're going to be faster, generally speaking. You know, again, unless you're just a perfect driver, and, and I know I'm not, so... I really like that about these cars. So, just a quick little, quick little rant about that. Um, as far as the tuning goes, kind of where we're at um, on in the factory tune, these cars will kind of work their way up to about 25 psi of boost. Um, we've noticed, but they start off kind of soft. They they kind of neuter things on the low end, and then you know ramp up to 25, fall off by red line. What I've been doing is just kind of bringing, bringing more of a flat boost curve in. So you get a lot more torque down low, you get some more power through the power band, and then a bit of a trail off on the boost from there to, you know, keep things safe. This is still stock turbocharger. We don't want to overspin it. We don't want to kill it. 
So we had to be respectful of some of those limits. But there is quite a bit more boost on tap and there is quite a bit of power from it, even on pump gas. We're seeing, you know, up to 30 or 40 horsepower, you know, tuning on 93 octane. An intake in there can be, you know, can be helpful, 10, 15 extra horsepower. Uh, ethanol tuning, we're seeing 60 to 70 more horsepower than stock. So that's a big jump right there. And the, the torque is right in line with that too, 60 or 70 foot pounds of torque. So instead of kind of being a little bit lazy and building the power up like this car does stock, it really, at, just after 3000 RPMs, it'll really snap into power and, and go, which feels amazing. And then it carries to redline very nicely. So very, very fun to drive. It's gonna you know, give it a lot more advantage at the road course, having some extra power to get down the straightaway since this is a bit heavier car than the cars we're gonna be competing with, which are gonna be lightweight, track-focused, GR86s, FT86s. Those are kind of the cars that are doing really well in that class right now. This car fits in because it has a small engine, even though it is turbo, but the disadvantage is it is a bit of a heavier car. It's gonna be harder to carry some speed through the corners where those cars can. So we're gonna to have to make it up with some horsepower and some ability to kind of maybe pull through the corners a little bit harder than they do with the boost. So that's kind of the, that's the idea there is get as much power out of it as we can. Um, as far as updates for the car and kind of what we've got done, we, we just picked the car up literally about a month ago and just started kind of thrashing on it, getting everything done we can. Um, the Eventuri intake was the first mod. We've got that done. The tuning, we've been doing that. Um, yesterday we got the exhaust on and last week we actually started working on an oil cooler setup for the car. Uh, went with a set trap core, found the right size one that fits, found a clever way to mount it in the grill and put that on there with a thermostatic sandwich plate so that way you don't overcool the oil. The factory oil heat exchanger still warms it up like you'd want but you've got you've got a lot more capacity um, to cool it off on the track because when I when I was driving one of these cars on the track the limit plus one car I found even on a stock tune it's very easy to get the oil pretty darn hot I mean 250 is very easy to get to which isn't too scary on a good oil but 260 270 after a few laps was a bit too much for me I don't you know I know Toyota will you know People will argue that they've engineered these cars for this. You're supposed to go to the road course, but in reality, most people going to the road course are going to be, you know, learning, doing HPDE. They're not going to be, they're not going to be full throttle everywhere it's possible. They're not going to be putting the car under maximum load, shooting for a fast lap necessarily. They're going to be chasing their buddies for a, a half a lap. Then they're going to kind of slow it down and you know maybe let a few cars pass that are faster than them, you know. But if you're using this car for time attack and you're thrashing it and you're going absolute full throttle, you know, everywhere you can, the oil gets pretty hot. You only get a couple laps like that. So um, the solution there is the oil cooler. So we, we fitted that on and we've already been doing some road testing on it. And just from, you know, from my, from my initial testing, I could easily on a, on a pull through fourth gear, a couple of those, I could easily get the oil temps to 215 to even 220. And now, I, I barely get it over 200. It pretty much hangs out at about 185 to 190, just above where the thermostat opens. And I can thrash on it pretty good, and it, it comes up a little bit, but stays pretty decent. So there's my other little section here. We'll give you guys a little two, three, four. They did send us a front mount. We're going to be doing a install video and the dyno testing style video on that real soon. Um, try to highlight, you know, the benefit of that front mount and, you know, really kind of collect and quantify some data, you know. Otherwise, to finish prepping for our first uh, race event here in a couple weeks, we've got track pads to put on. We need to put some um, track specific brake fluid in it that's a higher temp. We've already got wheels and tires on it. Uh, we're running the 18 by nines with a RT 660 255 wide tire. That is the spec tire for the class that we're going to be in with grid life. So we have to run that tire. That's a good tire. It, uh, it holds up well and it, you know, honestly has some good grip once you get some heat into it. Other than that, we've got some Cusco um, sway bar end links to put on to kind of help stiffen up there. We got the front sway bar for the car, but we didn't get the rear yet. The rears are, are 
back ordered pretty bad with Cusco. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to put the front on or not. You know, some people say don't put a front on without the rear. It'll, it'll increase understeer. Some people say, um, you know, it could be fine. So I haven't decided on that yet, but those are pretty much the, you know, the last few things this car needs and then we'll, we'll be hitting the track with it. So anyway, I'm here at the shop. So I hope you guys enjoy this little update of kind of where we're at and let us know in the comments, you know, if you want to see other specific things, you know, we can, we can kind of prioritize the, the vlog videos and talk about certain things from there. But yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoy.